And finally, our last uh, uh, talk of the uh, afternoon, uh, my colleague, my friend, my uh, Goomba, uh, <laughs> Paisan, Wolfram Alderson. Uh, Wolfram uh, is, has spent 38 years in the nonprofit field working toward improving the diets of Californians and the entire nation. He has uh, had numerous uh, uh, positions within nonprofits. Most recently, he was the executive director of our nonprofit, the Institute for Responsible Nutrition. He is currently the director of the Hypoglycemia Support Foundation, and he is also my social media director and uh, my go-to person for virtually everything that I do. Um, I will have a piece out a week from now called Big Foods Poisonous Propaganda, feeding directly into this uh, 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 symposium in terms of what we know, what's been done, and I will also be speaking at the UN, and Wolfram has helped me put all of that together. So he is going to now tell us what we can all do aside from stopping eating, drinking, bathing, breathing, and, uh, and uh, what's, what's the last one? Oh, birth. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Talk about a tough act to follow. Uh, Dr. Bredesen is amazing. Um, I've uh, recruited him for another conference recently, a uh, National Metabolic Health and Nutrition Conference up in Seattle. And I could, I could listen to him for another hour, so give him another round of applause. It's amazing. <laughs> and of course, Dr. Lustig, he said 38 years, but we've aged a few years together, so it's actually over four decades now. But uh, thanks to Rob and uh, great work. Uh, <laughs> he didn't make me age prematurely. It was something I did on my own. But <laughs> um, Anyway, a pleasure to be here with you. And like I said, this is a tough act. It's many acts today that I'm following. They were just amazing. And what I, my presentation is essentially a machine gun of uh, solutions that are out there. And I just tried to triage them into uh, good, better, and best. Of course, uh, we, we know that the bad news is bad. And um, we can look at the statistics, um, you know, the, the rising levels of chemicals in our environment. Uh, we saw this earlier, 30,000 pounds of industrial chemicals, et cetera. Uh, meanwhile, government appears to be dismantling regulations and policies, impeding litigation and legislation, uh, recent California ban on uh, sugar taxes and delays on labeling, et cetera. So, it's definitely bad, and, and we now hear and understand that industry is the leading vector of disease, not microorganisms or something you can catch from, you know, a dirty towel. Um, we read papers like Profit and Pandemics, if you haven't read that, I think it's a remarkable piece. Um, books like Lethal But Legal. Um, I don't know if Michelle Simon made it today, but her book on Appetite for Profit is, definitely reveals how um, recalcitrant the food industry has been in really implementing uh, solutions. The good news is that we are making progress on a number of fronts, and we have USDA Organic. Uh, I think it's now about 4% uh, of the uh, uh, total US food sales is organic food, so there's progress there. Um, we have organizations like ASPCA um, implementing Humane Certified, um, a program that allows you to make decisions about food based on animal welfare and the environment. Uh, we heard earlier from the Breast Cancer Prevention Fund and uh, the work that they're doing, providing product guides and helping us understand more about the chemicals affecting us in our environment. Uh, organizations like EWG uh, has the EWG Verified program, um, you know, highlighting chemicals of concern and verifying that products meet their health standards. Uh, apps like Think Dirty, um, which uh, empower consumers and uh, especially the cosmetics industry, make informed decisions. I think they have about 63,000 or 68,000 products listed in their app. Um, we have uh, examples of progress on the environment front with uh, LEED standards for buildings. Uh, I think they've now captured about 1% of commercial buildings in the U.S. Um, it's taking a long time to get these market shares, but uh, these solutions are also tremendous influencers. Even though all buildings may not be LEED certified, there's now this kind of gold standard or platinum standard for um, building health. Um, really amazing frameworks like health impact assessments. 
I don't know if any of you know of Dr. Rajiv Bhatia, who's one of the godfathers of this movement, and how they're using uh, this methodology to engage communities and planning departments and linking public health with the environment. Um, and really putting the data in, and the procedures and the methods into the hands of uh, communities and helping them to empower their health. Uh, organizations like eatreal.org, uh, we actually merged um, the Institute for Responsible Nutrition into eatreal.org, which is setting standards for restaurants so that consumers don't even have to think they can walk into a restaurant that's been certified and uh, it's a point-based system um, that looks at the food, food quality, environmental standards, and others based on the LEAD model. Um, programs like Meals for the Planet, um, uh, every time you eat a meal, you can factor in the needs of the planet, your carbon footprint, et cetera. Um, so these are great examples, but uh, they can be better. Uh, some, a lot of this information lives in silos, you know, going to a website, downloading PDFs, uh, lists of chemicals and information uh, is helpful, but it's also difficult if you're out there shopping on Amazon.com or in the supermarket. A lot of this information is in silos and isn't standardized. It's often buried on websites. Um, they have low market share. Um, you know, I saw this billboard recently driving out of the city. Uh, friends don't let real friends use relational databases. Um, you know, th these, these platforms that are emerging are, are complicated and sometimes um, difficult to use. So some of the issues of concern would be transparency, um, conflicts of interest, uh, you know, where is all this information going? How is it being used? Um, is it evidence-based? And is the evidence-based public? Um, universal standards versus free-for-all standards. So um, oftentimes these solutions, uh, individual organizations are developing their own standards, which are good, but I think we're starting to see the emergence of uh, organizations sh uh, sharing standards across platforms. Is the evidence uh, verifiable, um, evidence-based? Um, how easy it is, it is it to access? How affordable is it? And, and uh, how easy it is to monitor? Um, is it tainted by marketing interests and conflicts of interest, mining consumers for data? We've seen a lot of that in the news lately. So the, the concept of the exposome has, been, has emerged, and this thinking and solutions are evolving at a system-wide, cross-disciplinary, meta-brand level. We're seeing, for example, um, this is the NASA real-time monitoring of global climate change. You can go on their website at any time and, and see, get a global uh, pulse of what's going on. Um, apps, uh, this Ambicity app was actually uh, developed by Dr. Rajiv Bhatia, and we you know, learned earlier about air pollution, uh, noise pollution, light pollution. Uh, this is an app where you're walking around and you can not only receive data but share data and sort of crowdsource data around this type of pollution. An organization I'm involved with, uh, there's a chart out in the um, foyer there about our, sh our sugar matrix. Um, helping to make the food and beauty supply more transparent by taking standards and rolling them up into filters that you can apply instantly when shopping online or in stores. You take a, a filter that you might use in buying your food now, no added sugars. Well, in order to develop a filter for no added sugars, you actually have to identify all the added sugars that are out there. Uh, Rob put a little book out called 56 Names of Sugar, but there's actually 300 added sugars in the market now. And um, maybe they're not all harmful, maybe they are, maybe some are more harmful than others, but we really need the, the evidence and database uh, to, for consumers to access. And of course, you're not going to look at 300 names of sugar when you're shopping, you just need to know, yes, no, that's not on my list. Uh, so we're working on that solution and also looking for help uh, to develop that matrix. Uh, projects like the Detox Project, which is testing uh, hair, blood and food for the uh, presence of glyphosate. Uh, uh, companies like NutriCern, which are em emerging, we've heard a lot about personalized nutrition. I think I've heard a lot of hype about n personalized nutrition, but companies like NutriCern and EatRx are actually building really powerful relational databases behind the scenes so that consumers can actually personalize their nutrition. Uh, biosensor devices, which as we know, um, 
accuracy on some of these things has, has been uh, variable, but as the technology emerges, we're starting to see some really amazing developments, and I'm really encouraged, by, especially by the um, uh, continuous glucose monitoring technology. A company here in San Francisco called Sano is uh, really going for the mass market versus these devices have been targeted to type 1 diabetics historically. Uh, practices like mindfulness-based stress reduction, um, which are really now starting to permeate mainstream hospitals. We have great program here at Osher, uh, which I've done a couple times. Um, apps like Headspace, which are being implemented now here at UCSF, um, just to get uh, people into the, the practice of meditating and mindfulness on a daily basis. Uh, there's there's an application, Rob's written a book on hacking of the American mind, and you know how do we get unhacked, and there's actually an app for that, too. <laughs> um, so I think what, what's really uh, needed is, in terms of legislation and litigation, is this idea of collective action and public policy, and so how can we use big data um, to start to consolidate this information and inform our voting decisions, our purchasing decisions. Um, can we apply this data, this big data now, to, um, there's this concept emerging here, it's kind of difficult to see um, up here on this chart, but this idea of uh, an ex, uh, exposome exposure monitoring, so could we begin to bring all this data together in a dashboard and use it to inform public policy and uh, as well as individual decision making. Uh, similar approach, uh, crowdsourcing and participatory research. I mean, I think there's been a lot of lip service given, that, given to that in academia, but I think the, the actual practices are emerging and becoming stronger, and that data is becoming more actionable and accessible. So finally, um, you know, each of us is um, surely aware of some systemic solutions that are out there that. Uh, we can commit to, we ask when you leave this symposium, um, you renew your commitment to those solutions, you, you be the change and fully engage in those solutions that are out there and share these solutions with other people in your life.